Ladies and gentlemen, there's what? One day left. President Trump must pardon Julian Assange. His legacy is at stake. And like I've, I've done numerous, numerous segments, I've written three articles, two in the Daily Caller, one in the Times of Israel, calling for President Trump and calling for Julian Assange to be pardoned and for Trump to pardon Assange. So I'm going to start that off. I was going to do another segment now, but I said, hopefully I'll do a segment tomorrow on how happy I am and how appreciative the world is that President Trump did the right thing and cemented his legacy for future generations. Uh, I want Edward Snowden pardoned also, but Julian Assange and Edward Snowden um, and Lil Wayne and others pardoned. But I, I, Julian Assange right now is suffering, and he needs to be pardoned for reasons that I expressed in my writing and in prior segments. Hit subscribe to this channel right now. We're on our way to 200,000 subscribers. The best thing you could do for me and, and my voice is just word of mouth. Tell your friends, family, anyone, coworkers, anyone who might enjoy my unique take on politics. I supported President Trump for one of the main, one of the main accomplishments that he explained he expressed today and conveyed today in his farewell speech. The first president in decades not to get the United States into any new uh, military, con like major military conflicts. This is a fact. There was a rebuttal online by a prominent uh, left-leaning pundit. Oh, well, you, he increased this uh, tactic used, this military tactic. And uh, what else? Nothing, but still acknowledged what president, basically bolstered what President Trump and Pence stated. There was no new uh, regime change or intervention, which is a fact. This is, this is a tremendous accomplishment. This is exactly why I voted for President Trump. You would not have gotten that from Hillary Clinton, who wanted a no-fly zone above Damascus. And so, we'll get to McConnell in a second, but hit subscribe to this channel, because I used to be the biggest Bernie Sanders booster on the internet, according to the Huffington Post. There's a direct line between voting for Bernie Sanders in 2016 and voting for President Trump. A direct line. Because if you, if you voted for Bernie Sanders in 2016, very likely foreign policy is very important to you. Foreign policy is the primary reason that President Trump will, will be remembered as one of our greatest presidents. You look at his accomplishments. Now, his words, I, I, I can see in hindsight, he shouldn't have gone after LeBron James. He shouldn't have gone after NFL athletes. This is all accurate. There, there was nothing to be gained by doing so. But he is one of our greatest presidents because of his accomplishments. First president to step foot in North Korea. President Moon Jae-in stated he deserved the Nobel Peace Prize. And we'll get to McConnell in a second, but this is actually a great lead-up. McConnell has, has been blaming Trump, said that Trump provoked those people who committed that, those, those illegal, act, the illegal activity that's absolutely, I condemn, uh, the five people who lost their lives should be alive today. And what it did was it gave uh, Democrats and media the uh, justification to silence and, and suppress and um, censor voices, especially conservative voices, okay? Uh, Republicans like McConnell don't really care because they're, see, this is the, this is the thing. McConnell doesn't care. The reason McConnell is blaming President Trump it's partly, okay, there should never have been protests that day. But McConnell is a political creature. Hit subscribe to this channel. Let's get to 200,000 subscribers. If you want to support my voice, my Patreon is below. And to my new Patreons, thank you. My, my Patreon's below in the, my, in the pinned comment and on my uh, website. You can read my writing in The Hill, The Huffington Post Salon, The Jerusalem Post. You can see my debates on my website, hagoodman.com. Feel free to visit after this segment. It's below in the pinned comment and description. Your support on Patreon, my goodness, my new Patreons, thank you, is greatly, greatly appreciated, especially in this, you know, interesting time. I'm going to explain to you why McC McConnell doesn't care about Trump's accomplishments, because President Trump's accomplishments are not important 
to the average Republican. The average Republican and the average Democrat are two sides of the same coin. Okay. For example, if Hillary Clinton had won in 2016 and she got us into another regime change interventionist quagmire, okay, McConnell wouldn't have cared that much. He would have complained about it, of course. He would have said, look, it's a failure. But he wouldn't have viewed it as a um, monument. He, like, what, he, what, what happened in the, at the Capitol, he views as far more egregious than an actual regime change gone wrong. Like a failed NATO intervention that, that President Obama engaged in that caused Libya to become a, a failed state. That is obviously... An impeachable offense in today's time period. But McConnell doesn't care because it's not important to the average Republican. The average Republican and the average Democrat, which is why you need to elevate voices like Matt Gates, Jim Jordan, um, Devin Nunes, and others. People who stood with President Trump, not people who wanted to um, undermine him politically, like Ben Sass or Mitt Romney or others. Richard Burr, Paul Ryan... That type of Republican is not going to win another presidential election. Okay. You need somebody with a more populist message. The populist messages on the left and the right are pretty much the same. They focus on a reversal of U.S. foreign policy. Okay. If you want to talk about the populist message on the left, for example, there's a Medicare for All push by Jimmy Dore. Everyone is now showing who they truly are. They're saying, oh, he's creating strife among the left. He's creating division. The division exists because there are people who don't take it, who don't really care if it's never implemented. That's why they're pushed back, because they know the Democratic Party. One of the pundits said, oh, it'll take 12 years. Well, those people on the left don't want to wait. And and the, the more they realize, see, ideas are dangerous on the left. That's why they want to silence everybody, because they can't really, they don't want to debate or discuss ideas, because then they're out in the open. Oh, you didn't want Medicare for All. Oh, that's why you're you're against Jimmy Dore. Or you didn't want to uh, get the Democratic Party upset with you. Because the reality is, for example, Democrats don't want Medicare for All. That's a Green Party uh, policy, Okay. On the Republican side, McConnell doesn't really want a reversal of U.S. foreign policy. He doesn't care about it. That's what made Trump great. Okay? Peace between North and South Korea, being the first president to step foot in North Korea, being the the only uh, first president in decades not to engage in a new war, which is a fact. This is a fact that the left can't even refute. All they can say is, well, he did this and that. Well, any president would do that. Not any president would would cease uh, starting or would would, would not would preside over no new wars. That's what Trump did. So again, McConnell doesn't care. So to McConnell, to the average Republican, what made President Trump great is not important to him. What made President Trump great is that he didn't do business as usual. Now, if he doesn't pardon Julian Assange, um. His legacy will take a hit. His legacy will take a hit. And it's sad because I supported President Trump. And I support President Trump. And it's really, it would be sad. The main thing would be sad because Julian Assange deserves freedom. The left doesn't want Assange free. <laughs> because he published the dirty laundry of the Democratic Party. People, on, even on the far left, these people are phonies and fakes. Okay, there's so many, if I was on the left, it's so hilarious. There are pundits with major platforms now, major platforms associated with the $20 million venture capital people who are kind of, you know, they're just, they, they support Jimmy Dore in words, but they don't really support him. What Jimmy Dore is doing is fantastic, but he's, people are moving further and further away from the Democratic Party because the Democrats don't stand for what they claim to stand for and Republicans don't stand for what they claim to stand for. Or actually, Republicans never, to, to the credit of the never Trumpers, they they don't care about <laughs> they don't care about like the accomplishments. Like so, for example, ripping up the Trans Pacific Partnership and engaging just in tariffs. Actually, they they weren't really into that. Uh, creating the USMCA out of NAFTA. Eh, they're not really that into. I mean, they kind of they know. 
um, uh, as a Jewish American who cares about Israel, President Trump, and I know the left, you know, they want to fight all the uh, 19... The, the, left is, the, the left is so twisted and warped. They want to fight the 1930s and 1940s Germans while at the same time disparaging and undermining and trying to uh, harm the only state, the only Jewish state on the planet. So that's that's the that's the warped, twisted, absurd logic that caused uh, Yad Vashem in Jerusalem to denounce AOC's statement, her revisionist history. But that's a, another another issue. A lot of Republicans, I guess, they didn't care about President Trump signing an executive order combating anti-Semitism on college campuses, which is running rampant, utilizing the definition from the IHRA. You know, Mitt Romney or Ben Sass, they don't really maybe they. Who knows? Maybe they don't care about um, it, uh, President Trump recognizing the Golan as Israel's, recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's capital, moving the embassy there, which, by the way, Bernie Sanders even voted for. Okay. So, these are things that President Trump did not do business as usual. Now, his words, like, this is the thing with, with Trump. It, it's, it's a Shakespearean tragedy. His words were overshadows his overshadowed his accomplishments, and certain missteps in terms of like the past couple of months. There needed to be a national dialogue and discourse with Trump, Russia, with impeachment. There was never a national dialogue or discourse. It was it was President Trump either on the defensive or on the extreme offensive, and <clears throat> it was just. Like two ships passing in the night in terms of accu accusations and allegations. The Democrats fabricated Trump Russia. There was no Trump Russia. They sowed distrust in our norms and traditions and, and our uh, you know results in terms of President Trump. They called him an illegitimate president. And then they say, how dare you say anything? But see, what, in the past couple of months, there should have been a national dialogue and discourse. Instead, you had Rudy Giuliani with Just for Men. Uh, melting on his face. Why? Why? I I told I for months I said, go on the major YouTube channel, Joe Rogan, go on Tim Pool, go on uh, MSNBC, CNN. Josh Hawley should do that. He's getting pummeled now in terms of media coverage. Well, then go on the offensive. What are you waiting for? State your case. Why do you think the left wants everyone silenced? Because they can't. They don't have ideas. They don't know the definition. They, they're mired within the definition and semantics of words. These are like pseudo-intellectuals who... I, I, I watch like a couple of the... Or I've seen a couple of far left, far left, far, far left. And the, the far left always rebounds back to the Democratic Party, which is hilarious. So they, <laughs> the, the furthest left... Vo the furthest voices that are left-leaning voices, and they're in, the, they're in the 20s, late 20s, or maybe early 20s. And they're like... Not only socialists, they're like, like way, like so, anarcho socialist, all these people, and so they're talking about how they're talking about how President, one of them, very young, uh, individual, twenties, talking about how President Obama was <laughs> was a liberal and he did some bad things, like oh, like they they were saying that what was it, um, war simply starting wars isn't isn't doesn't make you a and then it's, the word starts with, with F. I don't even want to, with the well, algorithm, I don't want to get it. But, you know, the 1930s or 1940s Germans or um, <clears throat> a, uh, a despot or authoritarian uh, or an ism that starts with F. You don't know. It doesn't just, those are bad things. But it's really, and their, their argument is that it's really your words that make you that. It's really what you represent, what your image is. And it's like these people who know nothing about history. The despots and authoritarians from numerous countries in the 30s and, and 40s, what they're known for, which is what that, that ism is known for, is military, militarism, invading countries, um, causing the destruction and the lives lost of people in other countries and their own countries. Trump did not do that. <laughs> if anything, Trump... Um, combated anti-Semitism by signing an executive order, ensuring that, uh, if you read the executive order, that it won't stand on college campuses. They won't get funding if they make absurd claims that are truly anti-Semitic. That's different from just voicing an opinion. 
that is actually the speech that the left tries to curtail, except when they engage in the same hateful rhetoric. See, the left, they're complete hypocrites. They're complete hypocrites on everything. But it's, it's like President Trump is the antithesis of an authoritarian and despot. His, word, his accomplishments alone make him the antithesis. First president to step foot in North Korea to begin peace between North and South Korea, detente. That's not what authoritarians or despots do. Sorry. Um, didn't get us into any new wars. That's not what authoritarians or despots do. Okay? Um, we had oh, signed prison reform legislation. That's another hallmark of an authoritarian. Uh, mass incarceration, which, which Biden represents. He wrote the crime bill. And he wrote the uh, one, what, 100 to 1 pr- prison disparity part of the crime bill. So you have prison reform legislation. You have he, uh, President Trump allocated more funding to historically black colleges and universities than any president ever. The link is below. But, but see, his accomplishments are overshadowed by the rhetoric. He did not have to say the things he did on Twitter. Now, he utilized Twitter for, to his advantage Years before the before 2016, and also in 2015 and 2016, he utilized Twitter to his advantage. But what happened was momentum built up against him. Momentum, the emo- they, they had a monopoly on negative base emotions. Democrats, Twitter is a cauldron, a boiling pot of negative emotions, vitriol, venom, contempt, and it could, look, it could be they could be leveling it. At Trump or Bernie Sanders or Tulsi Gabbard or Jimmy Dore or anyone. Okay? It's it's not a matter of left-right. Twitter is a platform that exists. It's a cyber reality for Democrats. For Democrats. That's why you should delete your Twitter account. I do not have a Twitter account. There's a Twitter impersonator breaking the law all the time. And Amazon knows who this man is. (laughs) But it's like... So that's why, like, every tweet, it's like, okay, keep on, keep on tweeting. Anyway. The, like, when you, when you look at, at, at uh, so I don't have a Twitter account. I deleted my Twitter account two years ago. Two years ago. I was two years ahead of all of this. I deleted my Facebook account two years ago. So my 17-minute crowd, you should delete your Twitter account. There's no point to it. There's no point to having it. But ladies and gentlemen, um, he lost the, the Twitter battle at the end because there was no national dialogue or discourse. Like, you can, you can create, if you have the ability to promote and ideas and debate ideas using logic and reason, you should do so especially on a grandiose scale. That's why AOC doesn't want to debate. Because she could not possibly, like if it was Ben Shapiro versus AOC, could you imagine? <laughs> could you imagine the debate there? On any, on any topic. But especially Medicare for all. Because she doesn't even want to, she doesn't even want to have a floor vote. And then they say, well, you know, it's dividing the left. No, the, the, left, the left's hypocrisy is dividing the left. But that's the way it always was. There is no left in the country, by the way. It's just the Democratic Party. Okay, just the Democratic Party. That's why when you see those people dressed in like, you know, with their faces covered up, trying to beat people up, and they were anti, you know, an ism. Um, well, those people are not proud of what they're doing. They're afraid of legal repercussions. That, so they're not really like, they're not making the country safer. They're engaging in the same behavior as the people they claim to despise or, you know, historical behavior. But anyway, um, give me your thoughts below. McConnell's blaming President Trump. And the source of, the source of, Trump made missteps. There should never have been protests that day, okay? But he's protected under political speech, and they're not going after Trump in a court of law because in a court of law, it would be laughed out of court. He didn't tell people to do anything. He actually even used the word peaceful. Within the, the last sentence he did is now peacefully, peacefully and patriotically, peacefully, 
That's not that's not telling anything, anyone to commit any illegal act. But see again, the source of the the power and and influence within the within Washington, both left and right, is government. They they desecrated government, so that in terms of the NATO intervention that 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 turned Libya into a failed state because of President Obama, that's not. And now, like you can destroy a country if you're Bush, Cheney, Rumsfeld, Obama, but if you if you have anything to do with what took place a couple weeks back, it's McConnell's going to blame you because that's his. McConnell is not a business person. He's a, he's a politician. He's a lifelong politician. Trump doesn't care about politics really, which is which which was his undoing in the end. He should have created a, a po- political discourse and and debate. But his accomplishments speak for themselves. He needs to, if there's anybody who watches uh, this in the White House or any, you know, and has the president's ear, I don't, I'm sure, I don't, probably almost certainly not, but if there's anybody, do the right thing. Cement your legacy forever. Don't, don't give them the ability to erase you from history even more. Pardon Julian Assange, you'll be a hero to millions upon millions upon millions upon millions of people throughout the planet. President Trump, pardon Julian Assange, because he should be pardoned. And I explained that in three articles, two in the Daily Caller, one in the Times of Israel. It's on my website. But pardon Julian Assange, and you'll be, you'll be remembered as a hero by millions upon millions of people throughout the world. Tens of millions, actually. Give me your thoughts below. Thank you so very, very much.